Well, welcome back, everyone, to our daily devotions. Uh, it's always a joy to be with you. And we've titled today's devotional, Get Control of Your Communication. I heard about a lady who had worked her way up in the company, and she had recently been given a new position um, where she had a, a number of staff people under her. She's a hardworking person, um, and she was known for her diligence. Uh, but she had some problems with how she communicated uh, with the people who worked around her and under her, uh, particularly uh, with the staff, her immediate staff that was in her office. Within a month of her new position, her administrative assistant quit, and three long-term employees of the company went to human resources and asked to be relocated um, to another division. Now, hearing about the lady's troubles, her business mentor reached out and told her, either you get control of your communication or you're going to lose that nice position and any friendships you've made real fast. Now, Scripture makes clear that controlling the tongue is no easy task. In fact, um, it, it truly is a, an undertaking if you begin to think about it. And whether you're like this lady and, and you're commanding employer, employees and you're running a team or a staff or you're running your home or any type of business, anybody, a team, whatever it might be, we must realize that our communication plays a key role in the success of anything that we want to do. And perhaps that's why God gives so much counsel to this area, because God, obviously, God wants to bless us and he wants to see us walking in a way that everything we do, whether it's on the job or in the home, at church, wherever, that we are a walking ministry, that we are, we are representing him wherever we go. After all, uh, we are the ambassadors of Christ. And it's going to be hard to be an, an effective ambassador for Christ if our communication is out of control. And so one of the passages in the Bible that gives much discussion to this topic and really puts it into perspective is the third chapter of James's epistle. And let's just jump in here at verse two. Look what James says. Indeed, we all make many mistakes. This is out of the New Living Translation. For if we could control our tongues, we would be perfect and could control ourselves in every other way. Now he's gonna give two illustrations here. Verse three. We can make a large horse go wherever we want by means of a small bit in its mouth. Verse 4. And a small rudder makes a huge ship turn wherever, wherever the pilot chooses to go, even though the winds are strong. In the same way, the tongue is a small thing that makes grand speeches. So, let's put this into perspective here, not just because uh, you might be running an office like our friend here, the business lady, um, or you're a parent at home trying to get things uh, where they need to go in your home or, or at church overseeing a, a ministry or a group, whatever it might be. The uh, fact is, is that God wants us to get control of our communication. And what that ultimately means is that we're bringing it under his control. Now, notice that James uses two illustrations here to drive home a very sobering message. First, he talks about a horse being controlled by a bit. Now, even if you have never done any horse racing or you're unfamiliar with how all of that works, you've probably seen it on TV or a picture and you see this 95-pound jockey soaking wet, 95 pounds, controlling the direction of like a 2,000-pound stallion, okay? How is that? Well, obviously, um, the instrument that is in the mouth of the horse and him working with the horse and guiding and directing the horse, that has a lot to do with it. And... Scripture is giving us a kind of a point here that we're going we're gonna to see in just a moment. Next, he talks about a ship. Think of a large shipping vessel or perhaps a large cruise ship and how there are instruments, and namely in James's day, he's referring to a rudder, um, a piece of equipment on the ship that's, that's small in comparison to the size of the actual uh, boat. And he's driving home a point here in both the mention of the horse and the ship and he's liking it to words that our communication directs where we're going. Now, like our friend, the business lady, her poor communication is about to direct her right out the door with a pink slip. 
and probably going to lose some more friends. You already lost the administrative assistant, three long-term employees looking to go. You know, who was on the verge of looking to be relocated from your life because they just can't stand how you talk to them? Who just wants to get out of there because they're just tied to how you're acting? And how close are you maybe to losing your character, your credibility, or maybe some position you have because you're careless with your communication? Well, God wants you to get under control. It starts by looking at biblical truth. And that's what James is communicating here. This isn't just pop psychology. This isn't like some business seminar. Well, you know, get control of your communication or you're going to lose your assets. No, this is, this is a scriptural teaching that your communication directs and guides you. And if the spirit of God is truly in your life, you should be convicted if your communication is poor, that you should say, you know what? I don't want to injure people that are around me. I don't want to lose relationships because my mouth is reckless. I don't want to forfeit the great opportunities that God has given to me because I can't grow up as it pertains to my mouth. Because God is saying very clearly in his word, by way of these two illustrations in James, that our words direct where I am going. You know, if you want to know where you're going to be five, ten years from now, listen to how you speak. You know, if you're spewing negativity in your life, then you're not going to get, and you're not going to achieve the goals that you might have listed somewhere down. You're not going to take new ground. You're not going to overcome strongholds. And you're certainly not going to walk in all of the blessings that God has for you because you're not walking by faith. You're walking by something else, okay? You just fill in the blank there. You know what it is. But here's the thing. Thanks be to God, um, this is not the last word for you and I. God offers us not just an alternative. He offers us the way, okay? Uh, the way that we are to communicate. And that begins again by giving God control of our communication. And so instead of getting directed off the course, let us run the race that God has for us. Let us flip the script. Let us be people who are going to use our words purposely to encourage others and to fulfill the purposes of God. And as James will say later on in this passage, both blessing and cursing in the same mouth cannot be. We can't be blessing people out of one side of our mouth and breaking them down out of the other side of our mouth. James says that just can't be. And we want to take that to heart. And if there needs to be some confession and some repentance, then so be it. If you need to get accountability in this area, do it. By the grace and, and glory of God, uh, we will go from being people who have lousy communication to having excellent communication. You know, I don't mind telling you this, but I remember years ago, prior to coming to Christ, I had a very potty mouth. Um, I, matter of fact, uh, there, was a, there was a lot of profanity that came out of this lousy mouth. But by God's grace, I was saved. And it didn't happen overnight, but over time, um, I made a conscious effort that I wanted to honor God with my mouth. And look what God's doing now. He's having me use my mouth uh, for ministry, okay, literally. I think God wants to do the same thing in everybody's life to some degree. He wants us to take what might be a very negative character trait or quality in our life, and he wants to turn it around. Because guess who gets the glory when that happens? God, not us. And so God could take a sarcastic, foul-mouthed person like me and use me for his business. I think he could do the same with you. He could use you to bless the people in your immediate circles. He could use you to speak his word, to teach a class, to open up your mouth, to teach a group, whatever it might be, to, to share your faith with the lost. You know what? Those are the higher focuses that we need to have. And so let's throw away the excuses and the reasons and, the, and all of the, all the other belly aching excuses that we make. And let's say, God, I want to be um, your man, your woman who communicates for your purposes in my lifetime. My friends, that is a holy, holy focus to have. And my prayer is, is that God um, will give us more opportunities and chances to bless people with our mouth because that is his will and that is his heart. And so let's get control of our communication by bringing it under the control of Christ and let's leave the results to him. May God bless you and may we be a blessing with our mouth. Thank you.